we're back. Another episode. Hey. How's everyone doing? I'm doing really, really well. How about you, Devin? Doing good, you know. I'm kind of been enjoying the last bits of summer. How about Hurricane Hillary? Were you enjoying that? Or the earthquake? Uh, the the hurricane people are the calling hurricane. it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to be a lot worse than it. I mean, it's beautiful today. It's like yeah. completely. It never happened. I mean, California, we're not supposed to have tropical storms like that. So no. not a huge fan. But I definitely thought it was going to be worse than it was. Because, no. yes, we're a desert. We are not a tropical island. But it was, you know, it was interesting. But everybody, everybody I was with, they're all from England. So they were all like. It's like a typical day in England. Right. <laughs> Nobody was very, you know, excited about it. Like, this is it. Yeah. yeah. Little rain. Yeah. We'll survive. Everybody else is calling me, no, you're not getting on a plane. You're not going to be driving. I was like, calm down. Well, because you were traveling, right? You went, yeah. to, you went to a show and then yeah. drove back? Yeah. B- both nights. Like, we in, yeah, we did. Wow. From the desert, too. On a plane and in a car. Yeah. Wow. Well, I heard the desert show was amazing. It, <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely fun. They both were amazing. The show in San Francisco at the Guild Theater, which is a beautiful state-of-the-art little gem of a theater, um, was to raise money for Andy Taylor, who has prostate cancer, which was really incredible. And this is a really, really sweet story. Uh, I wish I could remember this kid's name. So my friends, when we'd already left, ran into this mother and her son, who's 13. He spent all summer washing cars to raise enough money to buy two tickets for his mom, whose favorite band is Duran Duran, and himself to go to this concert. And these are expensive tickets because it's a charity. Right. And then he had on top of that a check for $300 that he wanted to give to the band Aww. to give to Andy for the for his cancer treatment. I mean, it was like, oh, That's my so God. That's so sweet. So how sweet is that? Someone give him some free merch or yeah, something. Yeah, his name is Oliver. And wow, what a crazy story. That's like, that that's is amazing. So sweet. Yeah. I feel like the Duran fans, at least the ones that I've come in contact with, are all very nice. Very sweet. Very sweet. That story, I thought, was just incredible, though. Oh, really I touching. That. My yeah. aunt was at that show, and she said it was the best concert she's ever been to. <laughs> it was thrilling. That was the one in Palm Springs. Oh, right? yes, yeah. that one. Yes, yes, yes. So good. Okay, so we have some questions from Durannies and the Fluffians, whichever camp they fall in. Yeah. And people are just dying to know some things from you. So are you ready to answer some questions, give advice? Yes, I am so ready. And if you have a question for Fluffy, please email us at fluffyfilespod at gmail.com. Please and thank you. Okay, first question. Uh, this says, hi, Gila, I love your style. Do you buy individual pieces that you love and put them together later? Or do you mix and match them? Or do you style a whole outfit when you buy clothes? Ah, such a good question. And this is coming from someone that's obsessed with clothes like myself. I do both. Sometimes I'll buy something that's a whole thing. Sometimes, and you know, I'll go, Mm, got to have the hat, got to have the shoes, got to have everything. We love a matchy-matchy situation. Matchy-matchy. That's juicy. I've always been a matchy-matchy girl. But sometimes I'll buy something. Like I have this crazy East-West vintage swan jacket that I bought ages ago that's been sitting in the archives. And I dragged it out. And it's now like one of my favorite jackets. And then the trick is you got to find the right piece to go with it. It's got to be the right waist. It's got to be the right length. Got to find the right t-shirt to go under. I live for all of this, by the way. Yeah, love it. So I do a little bit of both. Also, have you ever thought about designing other types of clothes, such as gowns, since you often pick out fabulous ones for events and seem to love them? Yes. As a matter of fact, in my mind right now, this little tiny mind, I'm trying to create a tartan gown with Mm. tulle to wear on my next trip to Scotland, of course. Yeah, but actually designing gowns, like in the way that I started a company designing clothes with Pam, no, definitely not. Well, was Skyce Taylor kind of like that? I think think it was like definitely dressier, not gowns. not gowns, but dresses. Like I had this like idea that I wanted to design eight perfect dresses, but dresses that you could wear a lot. And I loved doing that. I loved Skyce Taylor, it was great. Gorge. Oh, and also, okay, so if you're designing this dress for Scotland, do you just like work with a tailor or yes. do you? Okay, okay. Yes. So it's like you and Corinna. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Me and Corinna. Yes, definitely. <laughs> okay, I love that. Oh, but there's some amazing tailors in Scotland and Edinburgh that I met that do all these like special kilts and just 
no one's really going to be interested in this except me. But I will say that there are these kilts that are so crazy. The old ones where they just wrap around and around and you have the long piece that goes over the shoulder. I want one of those. I'm sure you'll get one. Yeah. Okay, next question. Hi, Gila. Huge juicy fan and collector. I just wanted to ask a couple of questions for the podcast. What originally inspired the graphic tees and what's the oldest design you can remember? <laughs> the, <laughs> the, really, the oldest graphic tee, Pam really should be here answering this because I think, I think she actually did this. But the very, very first graphic tee that I remember us doing in our very first line that we took to that showroom where they were just like, it said glamour puss, but we misspelled it. So it said glamour puss. <laughs> that was the first. And we thought it was funny. So we left it. It is funny. It was really funny. It was like, what? I actually didn't even notice it. I was like, oh, I mean, the juicy glamour graphic puss. tees are iconic. Yeah. Like dump him. Dude, where's my couture? Live for sugar. Tennis, anyone, cross tat couture, anyone. But the, th <laughs> but the thing is that one, Pam and I always had a sense of humor about everything. If we didn't laugh and we didn't think it was funny, we weren't interested. And it kind of originated with Barbara Kruger, who's the big artist that did all the big graphics. Mm -hmm. And it's like, there is something about graphic tees if they're really, really good that are graphic kind of tees amazing. Graphic are hard to design. Yes. At least like for working at Pam and Gila and like watching you and Annie create graphic tees, yeah. it's really hard because they're so personal. They definitely are personal. And I think what happened with Juicy at the time is just we hit the zeitgeist and people like went crazy over things like dump him that Britney Spears was wearing or live for sugar. Oh my but God, I saw a picture of Britney Spears <laughs> when she had brown hair and it said something like brunettes are better or yes. something like that. Yes, of course, that was for me at yes. the time. But our, our Live for Sugar t-shirt was like, we wanted to have glitter and had to have like the most glitter that we could have. And the stores were going crazy, like you're getting glitter all over the rug in our dressing rooms. And this is not, and we were like, yes, That's more the point. glitter, bring on more glitter. We were <laughs> kind of bad, but good. <laughs> okay, whatever happened to the Juicy TV show that was planned, I'd absolutely kill to see that. Well, me too. I don't know who asked that. Sam. Here it is. This was the juicy TV show, Warner Brothers, Michael Patrick King of Sex and the City. And it was called Juicy Stories, which is a genius title. And it was sort of based on stories from the book. And I mean, I loved it, but I guess, you know. You know, at the, I think, coming from the yeah. acting world, hundreds and hundreds of pilots get made every year and only mm. a handful of them end up on TV. Yeah, so. I think it was like at the time they were really into reality. And this was not. Yeah, it so. was. Yeah, it was supposed to be on E, right? It was yes. e, one of like E's scripted. Yes. It yes. was like hybrid scripted. It was yes. like half you and Pam talking about it, and then half scripted right. people right. acting it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe, maybe one day, you never know. Never know. Warner Brothers. Hello. I also am old enough to be casted in it now, so that would be good. <laughs> that you could do me <laughs> exactly. There we go. Okay, I Warner like Brothers. Birdie. Reach out to Devin. Thank you. Anyways, TikTok or Instagram. <laughs> Okay, dear Fluffy, how does it feel to have grandchildren? Oh my God. I mean, they're so cute. They're so cute. They're so crazy cute. So now I have two. My son just had another one named Guinevere. I mean, that just takes my breath away every it's time I say it. A gorgeous name. Guinevere. But I love them. Oh my God, they're so cute. And Virgil is obsessed with John plays his little guitar and he he is kind of a musical he's pretty, genius he's, he's pretty, pretty good, good for yeah. a two-year-old he's really really good he's like he understands picking and the frets and everything they're they're so sweet it's heaven it's amazing when and why did you decide to go blonde ah okay this is this is a fluffy life-changing recipe okay so the first time well actually after my divorce i had very curly hair I went straight. I've never worn my hair curly since. You got Brazilians. Yeah. Or is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, I, and I blow dry and all that it takes hours. It's really intense. And then met John, went blonde, a little bit after I met him, never went back. I mean, I think I've always wanted to, to I had blue hair before and I just really wanted to do it, but I have so much hair. You do it was have a lot of hair. It was a, a Also, lot. I would like to point out, this is all your real hair. I think people would expect that this is extensions because no, it's so long. It it's is not. not. It's, I have a lot of hair. So that was a little daunting in doing it, uh, but I've always wanted to and I love it. And you probably it won't go back, I'm assuming. No, I don't think so. I think I'm 
I think I'm into it right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I'm contemplating going back blonde. I think it's like mm -hmm. almost time. You know, you like can feel it coming. It, uh, that was a traumatic moment. Devin went from blonde to brunette and it was absolutely heartbreaking. I felt for her in every way. We finally have come to a brown that I'm well, happy with, but it was yeah. it was jarring. Also, I, that is my favorite story of having you as a boss is I, I don't know why, I got my hair dyed on a Sunday. <laughs> flipped out i was so upset and so sad i i was not sure how i was supposed to leave the house the next night the next day and i called you or i texted you and i was like i'm so sorry i cannot come <laughs> into work i have to go back to the salon and get my hair fixed and instead of like being mad or like worried that i wasn't gonna get work done you were like oh my god are you okay <laughs> You were oh. like, of course, go to the salon, <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> I mean, that's the worst it thing. Is. That's the or, or like a bad. Oh my god! When I was pregnant with Zoe, because uh, yes, I have a lot of hair, and I thought, oh my god, I have like they're like 18, 17, 18 months apart, and I'm going to have this other baby. What I'm going to do? I've got all this hair, and I just walked down Melrose like like a crazy person. I walked into. I was nine months pregnant. I walked into a salon I'd never been to before, and the guy's like. Oh my God, you have so much hair. So he went underneath it and just started thinning it out. And I walked out with wet hair. And as I'm walking down the street, my hair is getting like bigger and bigger and bigger. And he cut so much off of it. And I walked in and Chris looked at me and he said, he's never said anything like that. He's like, oh, what did you do to your hair? It literally, like the underneath was just curling oh, up. No. And the top was like hanging off like that. And I had to cut all of it off. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, like scarf time. These are traumatic moments. Yeah. These hair are, is very personal. Yeah. You have to take this seriously. This stuff is important. Like as a boss, I get that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I appreciated it. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> God. Oh, oh my God. Travis one time went with John when we first started dating. And I'm like, I have this hair thing, you know? And he had, Travis had long hair like this. And I guess they had a boy bonding moment in Santa Monica, and he got a number one buzz. Oh, no. He came back. I literally was, like, on my knees by the bed, like, in tears. I was like, what did you do? It's like, these are hair moments for me. He's like, so, the rock star. Yes. Yeah, so, of course, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay. Do you drink coffee? Hell yes. And I will say, my coffee is strong. Do you drink it black? No, but it's strong. It's mega. Mm. So I was like, um, do you think I could have it a little weaker than this? <laughs> I like strong coffee and I love coffee. Same. Hi, Gila. Just a quick question that I have spent many countless hours awake trying to answer. I've spent 23 years raising my kids and working the schedule of whatever job I've had, restaurant, administrative jobs mostly, around their schedules. Now I only have one at home, she's 13, and I have no clue what the fuck to do. I'm in a position now that I could do something that I love and have passion for, but what is that? How do I figure that out? My kids have been in my life, and although I wouldn't change a thing as to how present I was, I kind of lost myself in the process. I want to work for myself. I'm too old to be bossed around by anyone to make a few bucks. Just feeling depressed and worthless now and looking anywhere I can for options and help. Thank you. Oh, oh I know. That's so sad. That's so sad, but I do think that that's a common problem that women have. And I get that because you've spent your entire life sort of being at the service of other people, your children, your husband, you know, the, none of the jobs that, what's her name that she's talking? Amy. Amy. Amy, none of the jobs that you're talking about are, they're not, it's not a passion. It's a job, administration, whatever. I couldn't possibly tell you what your passion is, but I think that the most important thing is don't cry, don't be upset. You're just in a very, you know, you're in this you're in you're in the Dr. Seuss waiting room and you just have to figure out what you like. And the only way you're going to figure out what you like and what you're passionate about is if you try things. And I think there's a million, I mean, right now people are obsessed with cooking shows. I don't know if you could try cooking. Half of the people that have companies that are amazing, like Famous Amos Cookies and all these like things called mush that are these cereals that people sell in stores come out of real life experiences. So you could dig deep into your own experiences with your kids or with your husband or whatever and think about something that might have come to you doing that that could be viable. When I was pregnant and desperate to make $100,000, $150,000 a year, I thought 
I would be a music producer because I read somewhere that's what they made. I know nothing about music, so that never happened. But then I watched the baby boomers about the applesauce company, and I started with my own maternity jeans that I made. There, it, it, your passion can come from everyday life experiences. You just have to relax and let yourself have fun doing that and see where it takes you. I also think that I, I get that you don't want to work for somebody else and you've worked in jobs that might not have been meaningful, but I am inspired by working with other people. I've been inspired by working with people like Devin here, who started when she was 21 and is just amazing. Working with other people, if you're doing something you like and you're passionate about, can also be inspiring. You don't have to do it by yourself. I'm a collaborator. I love that. Anyway, I really wish you luck and dig deep, baby. Dig You'll deep, figure it baby. out, Amy. You will figure it out. I have faith. We do. I have faith. Okay, next. Hi. First off, I want to thank you for everything in Seattle. I had fun hanging out with you and Jane at the Duran Duran concert. Someone you hung out with. My question is, if you can go back in time to give yourself one piece of advice, what would it be and why? Or would you not go back in the first place as it could change the enti your entire life and not necessarily for the better? Okay, Jane, I would love to meet you, but baby, I have never been to Seattle. So you did not hang out with me at a Duran show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. We did not meet and we did not party. So, but number maybe one. next time. Maybe next time. <laughs> yeah. Maybe one day I will go to Seattle. So, wait, what's the next? What's my question is if you could go back in time to give yourself one piece of advice, All what right. would it be and why? Hmm. Hmm. Well, I don't regret. I don't regret, Jane. I don't go back and think, ooh, I wish I could do this over again or that over again. I don't know why. I just think it's a waste of time to do that. I, I've always, no matter what's happened in my life, no matter whether it's good or bad or terrifying, I just like plow straight ahead. Kind of don't look back. I think It all a, leads you to the place where you're supposed to be anyways. Yeah. If you change one thing, it kind of messes right. with the rest of it. Like I just, the butterfly effect. Exactly, Devin. That was really profound. I do think like looking back or or wishing you were somebody else or wishing, wishing, I feel like it's a waste of time. Like we all have one life, got to get in there and live it and just whatever it is, just find what makes you incredibly happy. I, I don't think about going back and changing anything. I think that's fair. Okay, next. Hi, I have two questions. Wait, except oh. going to that hairdresser on Melrose. <laughs> <laughs> Regret. Right. <laughs> yeah. Bad idea. Bad okay. idea. Don't yeah. just no. <laughs> if you've learned anything here today. I have, yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay. Hi. I have two questions for you. First, I consider you a huge inspiration. I love how you've started your own brands. Do you have any advice about how to be taken seriously professionally for girls and women that want to start their own companies? Oh my God. In the very beginning, when Pam and I, not when we started Juicy, but when we were at, sold to Liz Claiborne and when we were all of a sudden found ourselves in this corporate world, the first time we were in the hallway in these offices, and Pam and I are both exceptionally loud people. Like we are just not quiet people, but you'd walk down this hallway and everybody say, shh, you're talking really loud. We go, what? And we just like walk down the hall and just whatever. But I feel like you just have to, you just have to know it's a girl problem. That is definitely, it is a girl problem. And you have to just ignore that bullshit and just be yourself, believe in yourself. I think the best way to get taken seriously is to be successful, to have a good product, to do it really well, you know, and then you could just be yourself anyway. I mean, we were, we did, we did sometimes play, you know, the dumb blonde, dumb girl card. Like we would always say to the VP of Bloomingdale's when he would ask us for promotions, meaning a discount, we'd be like, oh, a promotion, are we getting a gift? And we knew exactly what he was talking about, but we never let on that we we didn't. You know? I kind of love that though. Yeah. I feel like it's like lean in, like like I dare you to think I'm dumb. We did. We leaned, we dressed alike, we lent in, we were loud and we were funny and we just we we thought we were funny. Maybe they didn't, but we definitely thought we but were funny. But you also you knew what you were doing. Yes, and we made a lot of money for that store. So it worked. Like you can't do that if you have to you have to take what you're doing seriously. But if you're a fluffy person that's doing something seriously, you can just be yourself. So true. 
Okay, next question. I am absolutely obsessed with both the 2004 and 2008 Juicy Couture Barbie sets. If you could choose one more iconic look to be immortalized in doll form, which would you choose and oh why? God. One more look. To be a, a juicy look to be immortalized. Sure. Or it could be anything. Yeah. Mm. I think it could be any of your looks. Mm. Let's see, what would that be? So we've done the tracksuits, we did the couture couture. Well, I guess it would have to be Ken's turn and we could do dirty English. Actually, we could do dirty English and we could do, yeah, we could do dirty English. That would be fun. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm also thinking of like your iconic like a gown looks. Like you have this one like lilac, like purple gown. I remember we posted about. That oh, would that, be really pretty in doll well, form. Well, that's an amazing vintage dress. That's an amazing, but as a Barbie and Ken, we had Bird. Oh, right. Bird was the girlfriend of the dirty English guy. Oh. Right? So you get my Anglomaniac moment mm -hmm. there. So we could do that, you know, not iconically juicy, but uh, I guess it could be, I don't know. I like a dirty English. I you feel do? like there were a lot yeah. of comments on Instagram of like, where is John's Barbie doll? And maybe this is his opportunity. And maybe John is the dirty English Barbie. Maybe the a Duran Duran juicy collab in Barbie form. Amazing. And they could even be bobbleheads. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we got some rapid fire questions from our Instagram question story thing that we okay. did. Okay. What's your favorite cocktail? Mm, tequila. What's <laughs> what's your secret to perfect casual braids? Oh, well, actually. Yeah, I could braid my sleeve. But you get the braids braided, and then if you twist them around like that, they kind of get a little bit messy, right? I think that's the key, is like then the you slightly like messy. Dig into the sides a little bit so they're not so tight, you know? I'm so in awe of your confidence and style. What's your secret sauce? People ask me that all the time about my confidence. I, I honestly, I don't know. I think it's like people, I've gotten that comment before too. People have asked or like, mentioned to me that I'm confident. Yeah, you are. And I've never thought of myself as a confident person. You just are. I, I think it's just like a way that you like carry yourself and like fake it till you make it. Oh, I love that. Fake it till you make it. If you're not feeling confident, that's a really good tip, Because I think that's tip, kind Devin. of what I'm doing anyways. Yeah. <laughs> it's no, like, no, but that, but everybody, figure it out. Everybody does that. Mm -hmm. You think the first time you walk into some crazy situation, I went to Washington, D.C. to talk about the Hull Act. Do you think I knew what I was talking about? No, but I just pretended like I did. Exactly. Yeah. And you just roll with it. You and eventually it. you figure it out. Yeah, that's brilliant advice from Devin. Do you like to travel? Is there a place you would like to visit that you haven't? I love to travel. And there are a lot of places that I haven't been. I've never been to um, Africa, mm -hmm. dying to go on safari. I've never been to India. I was born to go to India. I mean, we yeah. used to make saris all the time. I cannot wait to go to India. And then, you know, there's a lot of other places that I want to like dig deeper into and get to that I haven't been before. But those two are top of the list. Why is Gucci your favorite designer? Is Gucci your favorite designer? Well, Gucci. People just assume because you're no, always wearing Gucci. I mean, the thing is, Gucci is not a designer. Gucci is a brand. My favorite designers, plural, at Gucci were Tom Ford, of course, 90s, and then Alessandro Michele. Alessandro Michele speaks to me, and he spoke to me. He's no longer there, which is, like, sad to me because he was so whimsical and so, you know, just otherworldly, and I love that. I'm, I'm an over-the-top sort of costumey dresser, and that's Alessandra Michele's Gucci, and I love that. And Tom Ford's Gucci was insane. I mean, sexy totally, yeah. and 90s and just So who's your favorite designer right now? Where are you shopping? Well, I don't have a favorite designer right now. I have to say that I think uh, a Vautier is really good right now. Saint Laurent is really good, especially men's is really insane. Um, that is a little bit of a problem that we're going to have to work on. I agree. Yeah. What's your favorite Duran song? Uh, well, right now, I'm kind of into Careless Memories. You heard that? No. It's very cool. Uh, it's not like one of the, I mean, I I don't know. I love that. I mean, how could you not love Planet Earth or Ordinary World? Like They, they make you cry when you hear them. They're so beautiful. Somebody was saying to me that we should go to Davos and the United Nations and talk to Al Gore and make Planet Earth the official song of climate change. And I say, hey, hey Al, 
let's make that happen because it's let's really it. ahead of its time. Beautiful song, and with what's happening in the world right now, mm, needs all the help it can get. And a and a song would be so good. Absolutely. What's your workout routine? I'm a Pilates girl. I do Pilates about four times a week, and I love it. I have a great Pilates teacher. I have a great reformer. Um, I like to walk. That's kind of it. That's a lot, though. I is think, it? Like, yeah, we're, I feel like be consistently working out four days a week is pretty good. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Especially Pilates. Pilates yeah. is great. I love Pilates. Okay. What do you think is the best college degree right now? I thought this was kind of an interesting question. Mm. Well. And, or just your thoughts on college in general. <laughs> I mean, I went to college. Mm -hmm. I didn't do what I, you know, I mean, I went to Carnegie Mellon. I was an acting major. I did do a show on Broadway, did some TV, but that's not what I ended up doing. Um, I think that college is great for, this is going to sound super loose. Don't judge me for this. Remember, I am Fluffy Raxel. College is really good if you can afford it. And it speaks to you for learning how to, you know, get away from your parents. You learn how to do your laundry. You learn when to feed yourself and what to eat and how to how to live your life the way you want to live your life, how to get your, your homework done on time and all of that without parents like telling you what to do. I think college is great like that. In terms of a degree, I mean, I don't really know. I'm not, I'm not, a, I think, I think like if you were into tech, I know Carnegie Mellon has an insane tech department and that's something that maybe would be really good right now in the world that we live in. I will say you advised me against college. <laughs> I started working for you. I was in community college. I have my AA degree, but I was acting at the time. And when I started working for you, because I'd always been interested in fashion, I was like, oh, my God, like, maybe I can go to fashion school. Maybe I'll go to FITM, oh, like Pam. Right. And I remember asking you, like, I th I'm thinking of applying for FITM. What do you think? Yeah. And you told me, you were like, Devin, you already have the job that you would want if you were at FITM. Like, just just keep doing what you're doing. Right. You don't really need to be spending money on that. And I thought that was really actually good advice. Yeah. I don't think college is for everybody. I think now more than ever, it is not for everybody. Most kids do not end up doing what they go to college and major in. Most of them don't. I think if you go to FITM, which is a Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising, if you are a pattern maker or something that is technical, that requires technical skills, it's more important to go to a school like that and have a degree from someplace like that. You know, I, I think that's more important than if you just yeah. sort of want to be in fashion. Um I mean, I never went to fashion school and look at me. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I also was not interested in going into debt for, you know, <laughs> a fashion degree. I think that's a horrible yeah. thing to go into debt. I mean, John went to art school for, I think, a half a year. And then he went to his parents at 17 and said, you know, like, I formed this band and I want to do this for a year. Are you OK with that? And they were like, yeah. And rest is history. He, you know. Yeah, But I think some people feel like if they didn't go to college, they've missed out on something. Mm -hmm. Like John is a prolific reader. And I think that's because he feels like he di he doesn't have this college degree, which is just oh, interesting. so ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, I always thought that I, f I felt a little bit left out when all of my friends were like joining sororities and like, you know, doing like the whole college thing. And I was like at home yeah. working for you, doing community college. Yeah. It wasn't necessarily like the quintessential college experience. But it's not for everyone. I feel like you're right. It kind of, it is what you make of it. It's what you make of it. And honestly, I mean, I never was in a sorority that I, that doesn't speak to me on any level. But, you know, if it speaks to you, go for it. I agree. Okay. Big sister advice to those navigating life and struggling. Ay, ay, ay. That's a big question. Yeah, I feel like maybe that could have been an email. Uh, to get some a little more backstory. But like, okay, back. big sisterly advice. To somebody who's struggling with with what? I guess we don't know. Okay, wh who's this person? We we don't know. Oh, anonymous, anonymous. Send us another email and get down and get specific. I agree. Okay, okay. biggest style influence. Me. Mm, God, I mean, I'm sorry. This is just going to sound so ridiculous, but as a child, I was obsessed with. Barbie and Barbie accessories. Like everybody knows this story about me. I had my first Barbie heels, which I was obsessed with. They were lucite with glitter lucite with li little glitter elastic, two elastic straps, obsessed. I always loved pointy sunglasses. I always liked feathers, you know? I Extra. Mean, I, I don't know what my influence was, but 
Oh, and I was like an amazing hippie. I had the best hippie clothes ever. I mean, I just, I love style. I like fantasy. I like getting into something and going all the way with it. Love. Okay. Kind of costume dressing a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, what color was the first juicy tracksuit? That, that's There wasn't a color of a first juicy tracksuit. The first line of tracksuits that we put out, I think there were six colors, hot pink, tangerine, black, white, navy. There might have been a lime green or yellow in there. That, that was the first. Fabulous. What's your favorite show right now, TV show? Okay. I know I'm a fluffy person, but I like dark. I go super. You do. You, you love like a crime docuseries oh or like God. super drama. I don't know if anyone's watched Dahmer, but oh, I mean, I do go deep and I do go dark. I did watch The Righteous Gemstones, which I love. I told you to watch that. Oh it's God. good, right? It was so good. It was, I loved it and it was funny. That mm -hmm. was a good relief from the dark, my dark world. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Favorite perfume? Carnal Flower, Frederick Mall. Amazing. Been wearing it for years. I sell a lot of it, by the way. Do you dress down at home or are you always fluffy? I'm always fluffy, but I'm fluffy dressed down. Definitely. I agree. Yeah. Um, any hobbies or activities you like to do to de-stress? Well, I do like crosswords and I'm really good at crosswords, but I don't really have enough hobbies like knitting a mm, little bit. I don't really get into it. It's one thing my son always said, you need a hobby, mom. It's like, but I, I don't really have that many hobbies. But I feel like your life is businesses. Yeah. And like, I, yes. I feel like you like just you're always working on something new. Yes. You have a new business, a new brand, something you're building. Yeah. And I, I get feel really like, into that. Yeah. You're like a serial entrepreneur like that. That is kind of your hobby. I am. I'm a serial entrepreneur and I love working and I like working with people. Yeah. Okay. Last question. Was it hard being a single mom and starting your own company? Advice for single parents doing the same. Oh my God, yes, it was definitely hard. The hardest thing was putting both of them to sleep at the same time. That was hell. Um, yes, it. You know, it's like yes, yes. And another question people always ask women is, oh, can you have it all? You can't have it all. You're running a big business and something's going to suffer. Your husband's going to feel left out. Your kids are going to feel like they're not getting enough attention. Your business is going to feel like that. But that's life. And that's been my life. I mean, yes, being a single parent, even in a blended family, it is really, really, really tough. But it's a challenge that you got to rise to. So you just like balancing just, all of it. Like yes. When one's suffering, you pick up the other one yeah. and kind of like Yeah. And, juggle. and there's definitely guilt in there. There's no, I wasn't feeling any guilt when I was like in the middle of it because I was just like 100 miles an hour. But you do, you know, in quiet moments, you do feel like, oh, did I give this enough attention? Did I give her enough attention? Did I him enough attention and they're all going to complain i really can't wait till my grandchildren grow up and they're gonna you know they're gonna be complaining too that's just the way it works that's so funny it's true <laughs> it's true oh my god and I, I this is my thing like you know how come they don't call they don't want to hang out with me it's like if if my parents called me and were like you want to come i'd be like hell no are you kidding like never wanted to hang out with them never they were my parents why would i want to do that totally but like as the parent you're like what you don't want to hang out with me? Yeah. Well, also, too, as you get older and you you start to go through things as an adult that you realize your parents were also going through, you're just like, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And my mother was wild. I had a wild mother. She was crazy. My dad was not. He was the opposite. Mm. A little terrifying, but <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I think these were all really great questions. Thank you so much to everyone that wrote in. If you Again, if you want to ask a question of Fluffy, please email us at fluffyfilespod at gmail.com. Yeah, yeah, this was fun. I loved answering the questions. It was I think great. you're great at giving advice. Hmm, okay. Okay, well, see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.